Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we'll be learning the final subtopic for chapter 7 called Solubility Equilibria. In general, solubility means the ability of solute to be dissolved in solvent, usually in water. So the solubility equilibria that we're going to discuss in this video will involve dissolutions with dissociation reactions that characterize salts. The solubility of a salt will be the amount of solid that dissolves in known value of saturated solutions. The solubility of salts depends on the types of interactions they can have with water molecules at room temperature. We already learned in chapter 4, only polar compounds can form hydrogen bond with water. Therefore, salts can be divided into two. One is soluble, means they are polar and can dissolve in water at room temperature. Insoluble or slightly soluble means they are non-polar and cannot dissolve in water at room temperature. The concentrations of the solute in saturated solutions is known as the solubility with symbol S. As you have learned in chapter 1, there are a number of concentrations measurements. So for units of solubility, it may be in gram per liter expressed as the mass of solutes dissolved in gram per 1 liter of a saturated solution. Or it can also be in molar, mole per liter, known as molar solubility, also with this symbol S, where moles of solute dissolve in 1 liter of a saturated solution. Let's look at illustrations below to help you differentiate between saturated solutions and insoluble substances. When equilibrium is established between the solute and solvent, where the amount of dissolve, the purple area, and also the undissolved solutes, the pink area, are in equilibrium, so the solutions is said to be saturated. Whereas in insoluble substances, the amount of dissolved and undissolved solutes are not in equilibrium with one another. This table shows the solubility rules for ionic compound. For the first two cases of soluble compounds, there are no exceptions applied. But then, the later two have some exceptions. If chloride, bromide and iodide are meant to pair with silver, mercury or lead ion, they become insoluble. As for sulfate ion that form salt with strontium, barium, lead and calcium, also considered as insoluble. While insoluble salts usually contain an ion of carbonate, phosphate, chromate and also sulfide, but if they form compound with either lithium, sodium, potassium and ammonium ion, the compound become soluble. Another insoluble compound is one with OH-, but if alkali metal ions and also barium, they pair up, they will become soluble. The equilibrium constants which determine the degree of solubility of a salt is known as solubility product with symbol Ksp. This Ksp can be expressed exactly the same way as Kc, Ka and Kb we have learned before, where product of the molar concentrations of the ions raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficients. So this Ksp involves only product in aqueous state in its expressions, since the salts that we're going to deal with is slightly soluble. For example, we have solubility equilibrium equations of slightly soluble salt of calcium phosphate, two dissociates into calcium ion with two plus charge, and phosphate ion with three minus charge. The coefficients comes from the quantity of the ions where this calcium got 3 and this phosphate got 2. So that's why we have this 3 and 2 as its coefficient. The reactions is reversible due to the amount of dissolved and undissolved solutes are in equilibrium with one another in a saturated solutions where the rate of forward reactions is equal to the rate of reverse reactions. Hence, the Ksp for these reactions is going to be concentrations of calcium ion to the power of 3 and concentrations of phosphate ion to the power of 2. If you look at the relationship between Ksp and concentrations of ions from the Ksp expressions, increasing the solubility will also increase the Ksp value. So this Ksp value is temperature dependent just like the other equilibrium constants. So increase in temperature will increase the solubility as well as its Ksp value. Same goes if we decrease the solubility, the Ksp value will decrease as well as its temperature. So from example given, between this MgCO3 and also PbSO4, 
we could see the KSP value of magnesium carbonate is larger than the lead to sulfate. Hence, we could say the magnesium carbonate is more soluble than PbSO4 because they got greater value of KSP, indicating greater solubility. Calculations involving KSP is quite straightforward. It's either you are given solubility value, then you need to find the KSP. Or the other way around, you start with KSP to find the solubility. So the flow is always like this. The solubility in gram per liter belongs to the solute. If the solute is about to dissolve in water or in any solvent, it will involve aqueous states. So it needed to be changed to molar solubility with mole per liter unit. And then the ions dissociated from the solute will have concentrations of ions also in mole per liter. And lastly, the KSP, where the value that measures how much solid dissolved to form a saturated solutions. In other words, equilibrium is achieved when you form expressions and substitute the concentrations of each ion's value. It will not necessarily start from the solubility. Some questions already give you solubility in mole per liter, then you can start from here straight away. To predict whether a precipitate will form, the ion product Q is compared with KSP. So this Q has the same expressions as KSP, but the concentrations values are taken at any given time. As mentioned earlier, saturated solutions is where both dissolved and undissolved solutes are in equilibrium. So we have this relationship of Q equal to K. So for a solution containing higher concentrations of solute than the solubility, so we could say Q is greater than K, it means the solution is supersaturated. A supersaturated solution may be induced to come to an equilibrium by precipitations. For a solution containing lower concentrations of solute than the solubility, so we have this Q is less than K value, they are said to be unsaturated. And unsaturated solutions may be induced to come to an equilibrium by adding more salts to the solutions until they become saturated again. Let's draw this one example. You are given solubility of 0.044 gram per liter, then you need to find its KSP. So first, you need to form the solubility equilibrium equations of the salt. We have PbSO4 in solid state, undergo reversible reactions to form Pb2 plus and SO4 to minus in aqueous state. Since we want to find KSP, it will require concentrations of ions at equilibrium. So anything regarding equilibrium, we're going to use ICE table. As for the salt in solid state, simply put dashed. Then, for the initial concentrations, since we just dissolved them in water, they shouldn't have any value yet, so simply put zero. And then, for the change in concentrations of ions, for now we are going to put unknown of S indicates the solubility. And lastly, sum up everything from I and C, then we're going to get our concentrations at equilibrium of S and also S. The reason we use unknown in this table, because we want to do the calculations afterwards. So from the solubility given, the 0.044 gram per liter, we will first change it to molar solubility by dividing it with the molar mass given in the questions. So we know the concentrations of the ions will be the same as the molar solubility if it is in water. So for now, your S is going to be 1.451 10 to the power of negative 4 mole per liter. So now we're going to do your KSP expressions for these reactions. The Pb2 plus concentrations and SO4 2 minus, we have this S and S simply substitute with S. Since we already have this S value, substitute the value, then you're going to get your KSP as 2.11 10 power of negative 8. An equilibrium will experience a shift if you add another compound that have the same ions with your salts. So this is what we call a common ion effect. If we rely on pure water to dissolve the salt, our initial concentrations will have zero value. But if common ions is present, for this case we have the CrO42 minus, there must be a value to start with. So this value will disrupt the equilibrium, hence shifted to the left. So the presence of common ion CrO42- will somehow decrease the solubility of slightly soluble ionic compound of this PbCrO4 
as we keep on adding more and more of this ion, they will take some more time to dissolve and then to form the saturated solutions again. Let's try the second example to see how common ion effect will affect the solubility of a salt. So what is the molar solubility? means in mole per liter of AGBr in 0.02 molar and ABR. So instead of dissolve in water only, we're going to put this AGBr to be dissolved in NABr. So you must always start with the solubility equilibrium equations, your AGBr in solid state, undergo reversible reactions to form Ag plus and Br minus, make sure the coefficients is correct. And then we're going to use this ICE table because Ksp value is given. For solid state, we're going to put dashed. But then for initial concentrations, we are going to dissolve this AGBr in NABr. Look what's common between this NABr and also AGBr. In NABr, we're going to have a common ion effect of Br-. minus. Instead of having zero value at your initial concentrations, we're going to put 0 0.02. And then for the change in concentrations, we're going to put plus S and also plus S. And lastly, for concentrations at equilibrium, we're going to have S and also 0 0.02 plus S. Then, we are going to calculate the S value by relating it to the KSP value of AGBr. So, take out your KSP expressions and substitute the value at these concentrations at equilibrium. We have S and also 0 0.02 plus S. So, we can assume that S is very small, therefore 0 0.02 plus S can be treated the same as 0 0.02. And lastly, substitute the value of Ksp, you will get your S equal to 3.85 10 to the power of negative 11. If we compare the value of S in here with the one that got zero value at initial concentrations of Br minus, we could see the solubility of in pure water will have greater value than the solubility in this NABr. That's all for solubility equilibria, and that marks the end of this chapter 7. All the best for your exams. Bye!